Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, stem cells. This topic was suggested by Rayhan Skywalker and Zara Malik. If you've got a topic which you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Now stem cells are a really interesting type of cell because they're a type of cell which can become any other type of cell and that makes them really interesting to medical science and medical research. Once we were all just a clump of stem cells. After the egg cell is fertilized by the sperm cell it starts to divide and all of those cells are identical initially. These are what we call undifferentiated stem cells. That means that they haven't become the type of cell they're going to be. They could become any type of cell. So you start with one cell and it divides and divides and divides and it becomes a load of identical cells, a clump of identical cells, which we call an embryo. Remember, an embryo is when it's just those undifferentiated stem cells. When we start referring to that developing baby as a fetus, that's when it started to uh, have differentiated stem cells and started to have features that are identifiable. But we all started out as that tiny little ball of stem cells, which were undifferentiated. Stem cells are still present even in adult bodies, but only in very small quantities in places like our bone marrow. For the most part, once we've finished developing inside our mother's uterus and once we're born, we don't really have stem cells anymore, which is kind of a shame because actually they're really, really useful. Medical researchers are currently looking into how we could use stem cells to cure all different kinds of diseases. A good example is paralysis, where someone's spinal cord has been damaged, and so the signals aren't getting from their brain to some lower part of their body below where the point of damage is. It's possible that those damaged cells could be replaced with stem cells. You take some suitable stem cells, either from that individual or from a donor, and you apply them to the point where the damage is, and the thinking is that we hopefully could trigger them to turn into cells to replace the damaged cells. This could potentially work in all sorts of other areas as well. It's been suggested as a cure for things like severe skin burns or for things like Alzheimer's. Still early days. We're still not at the point where this has become a widely used medical treatment, but there is enormous potential, even to the extent of Possibly at some point in the future, if someone is injured and loses a limb, maybe they could even grow that limb back. But we're a long way away from that at the moment. One of the reasons why we're only in the early stages of this research is because this is a very new idea. It hasn't been around for very long. There's also some controversy surrounding it. Uh, the main reason for this controversy is one of the key places where we can get stem cells to research on, and that is from embryos. And if we want to research human stem cells, we've got to use human embryos. Obviously, we get into lots of ethical and social issues when we start talking about using a fertilized human embryo, which could potentially develop into a baby. It isn't a baby yet, it's just a clump of undifferentiated stem cells, but it could potentially develop into a human life. And an awful lot of people would argue that at that point, it is a human life. Medical research into stem cells is quite tentative at the moment and it varies quite a lot from country to country whilst each different country makes their mind up about what they're prepared to allow medical researchers to do. And this could well be something which you get asked about on the exam. If it's a six mark question, you need to break it down. You need to look at the information which you've been given. And remember, for six marks, you need to really be making six points. You need to be looking at something like three pieces of evidence and then an explanation for each of those three. That's a key way to try and get those six marks. In a later video, I'll discuss this in more detail. But for now, think about why is it right, why is it wrong? Those are the key things which you've got to talk about, and you'll need to talk about both sides of the issue. So it could potentially be of huge benefit to people who've got all sorts of different injuries or diseases, but, an awful lot of people will object to it on those social and ethical grounds. They could disagree with it because their religion says it's unacceptable. They could disagree with it because they think it's unacceptable just to experiment on human lives. I mean, plenty of people choose to be vegetarian. Why wouldn't someone argue that it's not acceptable to do experiments on something which could potentially develop into being a human? 
So you've got to weigh those arguments up, and if they ask you about it, you've got to make sure that you're aware of both sides of the argument, and that you can talk about both sides of the argument. That's what they'll be looking for, and then back it up with reasons. That's how you get a good mark on one of these questions. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.